Good afternoon, family. I know that in the presence of the Lord, you must have had an awesome day so far. I have a special message just for you from the heart of God tonight. But before we get into it, can we do the declaration together? This is a custom in household of Christ. So at the count of three, just go ahead and go with me. One, two, three. I'm a son of God revealed. I'm blessed with every blessing in Christ Jesus. I'm saved. I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm a life-giving spirit. I accept his sacrifice on the cross and his resurrection power in my life. I'm bound to his word and can do what it says I can do. I receive the word with meekness and I'm changed from glory to glory. I have the God kind of faith. I'm the righteousness of God and will never be the same. Jesus Christ is my Lord. Amen. Before we start this afternoon, let's just take time to quieten our hearts in the, in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Can we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you that this afternoon we can come before you and take this time to just stop and reflect on your goodness and your mercy, Lord. Thank you, Father, that we can take the time to read your word, Father, and see the truth about our lives, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we can take the time as a family to just quieten down and listen to what you are saying to our hearts this afternoon. Thank you for the privilege of being able to spend time with you, to spend time in your word as a family, even in strange circumstances, Lord. We know that you are everywhere, Father, and that you are right here with us, even as we study your word this afternoon. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, church. I'm going to speak to you about a psalm that is very, very special to me. I've grown up with this psalm. I think most people have grown up with this psalm in their lives. As a little girl, I was taught a, a very short method of learning the first line of the psalm that has been with me my whole life. I'll be teaching you that just now. But um, it's a psalm that has been quoted in times of extreme joy, in times of extreme fear, and in times of, of extreme sadness. Um, it's a psalm that's been quoted the most at, at, at funerals. But it's a psalm that we can apply to any part of our lives. It's a psalm that we can apply to any situation in our lives. It's a psalm written by David. I'm sure by now many of you know which psalm I'm going to be speaking about. But David was a shepherd boy. He was uh, not just a shepherd boy. He was named the shepherd king. Um, he was acquainted with the sheep. He knew their ways. But he also knew the ways of a shepherd. David is one of the people that we look at many times and we see him as a king. We see him in his, in, his, in his peak of his life, throwing his garment down when he has made a mistake and saying, Lord, I'm sorry, creating me a pure heart and renew a right spirit within me. And then other times we see David being confronted by a giant and saying, who is this giant that dares to defy the almighty God? We see a David that has a relationship with the Lord and a David that walked with the Lord every single day of his life. We don't see a perfect David, but we see a David that knows that he serves a perfect king. And there's, that is what I'm going to teach you about this afternoon from Psalm 23. And I'm sure many of you can quote Psalm 23. Like I said in the beginning, I was taught the first line of Psalm 23 as, The Lord is my shepherd. So the ring finger is a constant reminder of me being married and being in a relationship with the Lord. So even after I got married many years later, in the day when I feel my ring, I'm not just reminded of my relationship with my husband, but I'm reminded with my relationship with my king. So maybe that's something you can apply to your life. Um, it's, it's something that I constantly remind myself of. The Lord is my shepherd. And this is the first line of the psalm. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. This is the most incredible opening to the psalm. The Lord, the creator of the universe, is my shepherd. He has me on his heart. He has my concerns on his heart and he has my future on his heart. So let's read from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In Psalm 23, we see that the psalm is divided in three different settings. 
The first setting is in a pasture, where we see God as the shepherd leading the sheep. The second part of the psalm is set in a valley, where we see God as the shepherd being our deliverer and our protector. And the third part of the psalm is set in a camp where there's preparations being made, where we see God the shepherd as our provider. This is profound, church, because in these three settings, we see every single situation in life. Let's start at the first part where I said we see the first part of Psalm set in a pasture. You know, many times we think it's our physical needs that I shall not want. But with more than that, we have the Holy Spirit. We have God with us. And if we have him, what can we want? Charles Spurgeon says a very interesting thing. He says many times we set in stone the things we've done wrong. We set in stone the failures in our lives. We set in stone the things that we think we should have and could have had. Many times we set in marble. We carve in marble things that we shouldn't be carving in marble. We should be carving in marble the goodness and the faithfulness of the Lord. We should be carving in marble that the Lord is our shepherd and we shall not want. And if I have him, it's enough. But instead of that, we write these mercies in the sand. It's one of the most beautiful quotes that has always stuck with me and it constantly reminds me to get my priorities right. In this, in this psalm we see, he says, He leads me beside still waters. He leads me. To allow the shepherd to lead you, you have to hand over control. It doesn't say, I lead the shepherd to still waters or I tell the shepherd which direction to go. I allow him consciously to lead me beside still waters. To have still waters, I must have peace in my heart, church. Is that where you are this afternoon? Or is your, is your river raging with worries and cares and tribulations and trials? Or are you being led beside still waters? Are you trusting the shepherd in the leading? Isaiah 55 says, are you thirsty? Come to me. Isn't this another direct translation to water? He says, are you thirsty? Come to me. This afternoon, church, the, the, the Lord is asking you, are you thirsty? Do you want to lie beside still waters? In the next part of the psalm, he says, he restores my soul. Psalm 42 verse 11 says, So I say to my soul, don't be discouraged. Don't be disturbed. For I know my God will break through for me. Then I'll have plenty of reasons to praise him all over again. Yes, Living before His face is my saving grace. Isn't that true, church? Living before His face is our saving grace. In living before His face, He restores our soul and He gets us to a place where we find rest in Him. The next part of the psalm says, For His name's sake. We are made and we are created for the sake of God. We are not created for our agenda or for our plans or for our purposes. We are created for His name's sake. To put on his namesake, we have to take up the cross. This means laying down my cross, laying down my burdens, laying down my situation. Part of my surrender is laying down my strengths and my weaknesses. Isn't that something that we can think about, church? When we come to him for his namesake, we come to him for his namesake only. We lay down our strengths and our weaknesses at the cross and we pick up the cross and the cause he has for us. So this concludes the first part of the psalm. The psalm set in a pasture where the, the Lord is my shepherd directing me. He leads me beside still waters for his name's sake. He leads me. He leads me. Amen. In the second part of the psalm, we see a part that many of us face many times. The situation we are sitting in right now might feel a little bit like this. Amen. So let's read again in, this, in, in Psalms 23 verse 4. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. This is a walking. It doesn't say, Yea, though I run. Or it doesn't say, Yea, though I cry. Or Yea, though I'm crawling. It says, Yea, though I walk. You see, church, while we are walking, we are still moving. When we go through a shadow, a valley of a shadow of death, we walk through it. And we don't stand still in it. Many times we stand still in our walking and we ponder on things where God has said, I will walk. I will not stand still in my valley. I will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And in my walking, I will fear no evil. What does that mean, church? What can this world do to us? 
if we have the God on the inside of us? What can situations do to us if we have the creator of the universe fighting for us? The same God that was on the battlefield with David facing Goliath is the same God that's in your heart today. And he's in the same God that is fighting the battle with you today. So as we walk, which means we are progressively moving through this valley of the shadow of death, we know we do not have to fear. Turn to the person next to you and say, do not fear, because we know our God is near. Amen? This is the second part of the Psalms where we see God as our deliverer. But he doesn't stop there. He says, for you are with me. The God of the universe is with me. The God of a trillion stars is with me. The God who made the beginning and the end of everything is with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The rod and the staff. God as a shepherd has a rod and a staff that comfort me. Sometimes when we think of a rod, we think of something that just hurts. But it doesn't. It's there to ward off evil. In David's, in, in David's story, when he faced Goliath, he had a rod and a staff. What does this mean? When he protected his sheep against the lion and the bear, he must have used a rod to, to ward off the evil. So God is saying here that his rod and his staff are there protecting us. That is the conclusion of the second part of the, the psalm, where the psalm is set in a valley, where we see God as the shepherd who protects. Isn't that amazing, church, to know God is our shepherd, not only leading and guiding us, but also protecting us against any form of evil. Now we get to the last part of the psalm. This is the exciting part where we see God prepares a table for us. Look here, it says in, in verse 5, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. God takes the time to prepare a table for you. He sets a table for you in the presence of your enemies. What does this mean? This means that our God is aware of our situation. But he's also aware of the fact that as we trust him, he will take us through those things that are called our enemies and prepare a table in the presence of them. You anoint my head with oil. Church, you and I are anointed with the presence and the fragrance of the Holy Spirit. God anoints our heads with oil in this time. No harm will come close to us because we belong to him. Just like the shepherd would anoint the heads of the sheep, God is anointing our heads this afternoon, church with his presence, a presence that lingers, a presence that stays, and a presence that protects. My cup runs over. You know, our cups cannot only be full or half full, our cups run over. We don't just have enough, we have more than enough. We are going to get through this and we are going to have more than enough. We are not just going to keep our needs met, we are going to meet many, many needs of those around us after this lockdown. Amen. It continues to say, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me. Is this not a reflection of something that he knew about already? David knew the goodness and the mercy of the Lord and he knew that it followed him. Wherever he went, the goodness of the Lord followed him. The mercy of the Lord followed him. Do you have a revelation of this this afternoon, church, that the goodness and the mercy of the Lord will follow you all the days of your life? God is not afraid of a lockdown. His goodness and His mercy is not afraid of a lockdown. He's right there with you, following you through this process. And we will come out stronger than ever before. We have a promise in the scripture, church, that says, And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This means that we will get together again and dwell in his house forever. Many people know the psalm, but do you know the shepherd of the psalm? Are you acquainted with the psalm as, as a go-to in a hard time? Or are you acquainted with the psalm knowing God as your shepherd? Is your prayer this afternoon, Lord, you know me. You know my ways. You know my coming and you know my going. You know my lying down and my standing up. Do you know the heart of the shepherd? Not just know the heart of the shepherd, do you trust the heart of the shepherd for you? That is my question for you this afternoon. Do you trust the heart of the shepherd for you? If you know that the shepherd loves you unconditionally, completely, you will not 
be concerned about the next thing coming because you'll know your shepherd is right there. To end this afternoon, I actually want to read this psalm for you again in the Passion Translation because it brings out such a beautiful truth in, in the context of, of how it's written. So can we read Psalm 23 in the Passion Translation? The Lord is my best friend and my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace, the quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores and revives my life. He opens before me pathways to God's pleasures and leads me along the footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Lord, even when your paths take me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me, for you already have. You remain close to me and lead me through it all the way. Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I'll never be lonely, for you are near. You become my delicious feast, even when my enemies dare to fight. You anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of you until my heart overflows. So why would I fear the future? For your goodness and love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence to be forever with you. Isn't that beautiful, church? I do not fear because I have you near. The most beautiful part of this part that just grabs my attention every time is the comfort of your love takes away my fear. The comfort of knowing that I have the great shepherd takes away any fear. Let's close our eyes and pray this afternoon. Father, we thank you that we can come to you this afternoon, Father. And we can once again thank you for not only being our friend, Father, but being our shepherd, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you have led us beside quiet waters, Father. Thank you, Lord, that you restore our soul, Father. Thank you, Lord, that in you we do not fear because we know your love is always near, Father. Thank you that this afternoon we can take time just to come before you and say that we love you, Jesus. We love you, Father. We love you, Holy Spirit. We love your leading. We love your guidance. We love the beautiful things that you have planned for us. And this afternoon, Father, we decide to not write our miseries in marble, Father, to not carve them in those places and forget about your mercies in the sand, Father. This afternoon we come and we carve your mercies in marble, Father. We carve your goodness and your grace in marble, Father, and we put our miseries in the sand, Father. And we say, Holy Spirit, blow away that sand and give us a fresh start in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So thank you for spending the time with us this afternoon. I want to encourage you that even as you go into this week, remember, God is the shepherd that gives you direction. God is the shepherd that protects you. And God is the shepherd that provides for you in every single circumstance. Keep your eyes set on him. Keep your heart set on him. And trust in the love that he has for you. Amen.